test for us. They're uh, obviously having a good year, and now with Chris back and healthy, they're you know a different team. So it's going to be a, a great challenge for us. And you know I think we've won eight of eleven, so it's a good time for us to play and going into the break. How do you slow down a Chris Paul? Well, you got to get back in transition, try to make them play in the half court. Uh, team defense and schemes got to be really solid, and you got to be aggressive. You got to make it hard for them. From one point hard to the other. What do you admire about Chris Paul's game? What don't I admire about it? I mean, he does everything. So he's, uh, you know, he's, I don't know that he has a weakness and he's, uh, you know, on his way to being one of the best ever. You played in the Western Conference your whole career, 17 years. You've seen the Clippers a lot. Uh, any explanation, you know, they are in Los Angeles, have great facilities, they've had some great players, but it's, it did it ever like kind of perplex you why they couldn't sustain success? Well, it sounds like investment. You know, I'm not there, so I don't really know what goes on behind closed doors, but it seemed like uh, investment was an afterthought for much of the last 30 years but um, or, or however long. But it's uh, recently they've invested in guys. Obviously, you bring in a special player like Chris, and you have, uh, you know, a talent like Blake. You know, it's, those are cornerstones. So, you know, but it takes investment to have those two guys and then filling them in. You know, obviously this year they've done a tremendous job. They're as deep as anybody, you know, I've seen in a long, long time. How much do you guys need tomorrow, game? Well, it'd be, a big, it'd be a big, big win for us, obviously. But, um, you know, win or lose, we got to keep plugging. And, you know, we want to try to, like I said, win two of three or three of four the rest of the way and see if we can uh, climb back in this thing. But, you know, we don't, we're not going to get back in in one game and we're not going to get out in one game. It's going to be, you know, that consistent trajectory of, of, you know, winning more than we lose. Steve, back to last night, what did you like about the offense? Well, I thought, you know, I thought we did a, a good job for, in stretches where we really picked them apart in the pick and rolls. We made the extra pass. Uh, you know, Dwight put a lot of energy, I thought, into the pick and roll game. He got me free. He got himself free under the basket. He draw, drew a crowd for other guys to get openings. And I thought we were really difficult to guard. I thought, you know, the times we struggled when we got stagnant, you know, and the ball didn't move and they could zone up against us. So, you know, when we moved it, you know, I thought Dwight was really, you know, energetic and worked hard. I thought he was tired at times and he kept fighting. And as a teammate, you know, that's... You know, that's the stuff that you really get proud of. Speaking of last night, I mean, we all know what happened in the third quarter. And looking back to the last time you guys played the Clippers, that third quarter, I think you guys were down by three points. And then in the third quarter, all of a sudden, you're down by ten. Is this a third quarter curse? I mean, is it energy? What's going on here? I don't know. I don't know if it's always the third quarter. Or, uh, you know, I know we've had some pretty poor fourth quarters. Um, you know, but bottom line is we're still growing. We're still trying to figure out who we are. And, and what's the best way for us to play, different lineups. You know, we've had guys in and out of the lineup, so then to try to find different combinations. You know, we're still trying to figure it all out, to be honest. And we're just, I think, pleased that we're winning games while we do it now instead of like before where we were losing a lot of games and still not figuring anything out. Antoine Jamison really had a good first half and an overall good game. What clicked for him in your eyes? Well, he's a smart player. You know, he's skilled. He can make shots. He can finish in the paint. He's, a, he's an extremely bright cutter. You know, he knows how to space and when to cut. He runs into pick and rolls, and it makes it difficult for the defense. And I think, you know, teams are going to obviously try to stay with Kobe, stay with myself, stay on Dwight's body. And I think, you know, he's been brilliant at reading the space that's, you know, given to him because of that. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a very smart basketball player, very instinctive. And last night he just, he picked them apart, cutting without the ball. You look at Kobe Bryant and last night, I think it'd be fair to say it was an un-Kobe-like performance. What does that say about this team uh, that they were able to pick up where he had yeah. some deficiencies? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that's going to happen from time to time. It's important for everyone else to step up. You know, most importantly, we kept them in the 80s, I believe, uh, defensively. Um, and then, you know, offensively, even though it wasn't his you know, normal game. I thought we, we did a good job at different times, you know, making the extra pass, running into pick and rolls, setting good picks, rolling hard, swinging the ball, making shots. And, um, you know, when you move the ball and you make move bodies, our team's got enough talent that we can score. And if we keep teams in the 80s, we should win most nights.